I know. We've been really rolling in the video games, mostly in the Pokemon genre, but we still have a little bit to go. Today, we cover Generation 5. That's right, we cover Black and White and Black and White 2. But since I never played Black and Black 2, I'm covering mostly White and White 2. As per usual, the first cutscene catches my eye in both games. In White, the game starts off in Nueva Town, in, the, in your own room, as your childhood friend Sharon comes over with Pokemon that you can choose for your starter Pokemon. Bianca, another friend of yours, comes over and also chooses from the Pokemon that Sharon brought over. Now, interestingly enough, these two childhood friends instantly become your rivals. And uh, Bianca and your character kind of mess up your bedroom after you battle her. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. <laughs> In White 2, the game takes place two years after White. So, we keeping up so far? How are we doing so far? <laughs> There are many changes that have taken place in Unova over the time period, with new locations and some changes in the gym and champion world. The player begins in Asperita City this time, receiving their Pokemon from Bianca, who is now Professor Juniper's assistant. As for Charon, he is now a gym leader. How weird is that? And, of course, you have your rival, but we're not going to get into that. While these games have several differences in their storyline, the feel is about the same. You have to become the very best like no one was ever, like no one ever was, and save the world all before bedtime. Yeah, I used a Powerpuff Girl reference. Sue me. Anyways, with all the new Pokemon, gyms, challenges, and the path that lies ahead of you, these games are pretty decent. What I really liked most about these games were the storylines themselves, as long as you could keep up with it. I also liked the introduction of the seasons, which was just amazing, and it did cause Deerling and Saucebook to have four different forms that were attainable for capture. The downsides I see to this game are as follows. Number one, the dream world. Okay, am I the only one who couldn't keep up with this idea? Granted, you could go into this dream world and capture dream Pokemon, but that didn't really help you in the long run, did it? Not only did you have to do that, but you had to capture these dream Pokemon at a certain time and day. Not exactly my cup of tea when I don't go for that perfect Pokemon anyway. Number two, the Pokemon Musical. If you hated the contest as much as I did in the Hoenn and Sinnoh regions, then you're really going to hate the Pokemon Musical. Because in order to get 100%, you have to do it. You have to do these dances to get 100% in the game. And half the time you didn't know what the heck you're doing. Why are we doing this again, Game Freak? Just, just, why? <laughs> Number three, rotation and triple battles. And or triple battles. Depending on if you like the double battles like I do, then you hated the rotation battles, which allowed you to rotate your three Pokemon on the field at any time. And that royally screwed up any strategy you had to take down those three Pokemon. But if you're a person that hates double battles, then you really hate the triple battles, which requires three Pokemon out of the field at once, which really requires you to think outside the box to win the battle. So it all depended on what you were good at for that downfall part of the game. Number four, Hidden Grottoes. 
In White 2, these were introduced to help get uh, bleh, to help trainers to either get Pokemon that were stronger than the ones out in the current area they were in, or they could get an item that was super rare. In ordinary, to get 100%, you had to find all these hidden grottos. Not only did that get super annoying rather quickly, especially when the item you found in the area was something that you didn't need, and you already had the Pokemon in the grotto anyway, and you were leveling it up on your team anyhow, this was just not worth your time. And it got annoying really quick. It did, in all opinion. All in all, I give White and White 2 a fair 7 out of 10. It could have done better, but in all honesty, there was just a lot of downfalls to the game that I didn't understand or didn't use, and I just put it in there to rate it fairly. Because I'm a big Pokemon fan, and in all honesty, if I'm not fair about these video reviews, then I feel like you guys aren't going to be fair to me about your comments. But you guys can always prove me wrong. You can always prove me wrong. I mean, you could always step in and say, hey, I like this, or hey, I like that. Whatever. Whatever floats your boat. Since we have a little bit of time, I'm going to end off this video and start my next one. So we can end off the Pokemon video game reviews, and then go into my next point of interest, Crash Bandicoot. See you guys in just a minute. But for now... I'm Amy Kuhn, aka 1028, and I'm signing off from Kids Network Studios for a little bit. See you in a few.